Hello, everybody, and welcome to the third episode of On Screen. I'm your host, Dylan Wright, and I'm here to take you on a journey through film and television. So today's topic that I want to talk about is the superhero film, specifically the DC superhero film and the Marvel superhero film. It's almost impossible to walk into a theater and not see a superhero film being played. We have Marvel's Doctor Strange coming out in November. We had Civil War earlier. We had Suicide Squad for DC. And we also had Batman v Superman before that. So it's it's almost impossible to not see a superhero film in today's cinema. It's almost like it's the new blockbuster film to expect. And that's because we're kind of in a superhero heyday within Marvel and DC. And if you look back throughout the history of film, we've always had kind of an up slope and a down slope with superhero films. Back in the 70s, we had the Superman movies, which were hugely popular. And then once Superman 4 came around, it kind of dropped off again. And then you had the Tim Burton Batman movies, which rose popularity of superhero films again. And then it kind of dropped off again once Batman and Robin hit. And then we had Spider-Man, and then Spider-Man 3 caused it to crash. And then we had Fantastic Four, and Silver Surfer caused it to crash. So there's always these kind of roller coasters for superhero films that have been happening throughout the years. Now, we're kind of in a period that it's been a really long time since we've had a, a truly horrible superhero film that would have stopped the the trend from going and stopped superhero films from being profitable. So we've just been getting film after film after film, and most of them are coming from DC Comics and Marvel Comics. And that seems to be what every fanboy wants to debate, is whether or not DC is better than Marvel. And the thing with that is they're both strong in certain areas and weak in other areas some of the weaknesses they actually share and i'll get into a really specific one later on but let's start out with the strengths of both of them some of marvel's strengths are that they really seem to have a lot of fun in a lot of their movies you know there will there will be some serious moments some really powerful emotional moments but there's always a, a laugh to be found within the Marvel movies. And that's something that the audiences really pick up on and they really enjoy. I especially enjoy it, seeing uh, superheroes quip back and forth as they fight evil. It's always it's always a fun time and it prevents the film from getting bogged down too much in its own uh, seriousness. Because you have to remember that these are like superhero films. They're not supposed to be uber realistic and gritty and, and dark because they're not. They're guys in colorful capes and tights running around flying around fighting evil it's there, there's a an inherent silliness to the concept and, and marvel they know when to do their uh, really serious moments and when to have fun with it and they also really like their characters you could tell that they have fun with thor and iron man and captain america and it's really interesting to remember that iron man wasn't that big of a character before the iron man film came out and now He's one of the household names along with Captain America and Batman and Superman. It's fun to see Marvel take these characters and and give them new life. And, you know, even with Guardians of the Galaxy, nobody knew who Star-Lord or Rocket Raccoon, unless you read the comic books, was. And they managed to make this obscure team from the comics into this very popular, very fun, very successful film. And I think the biggest difference between... Marvel now and DC now is that DC used to have fun with its characters and used to uh, realize how silly some of the concepts were back in the older films like with the original Superman movie Christopher Reeve was always kind of winking at the camera because he like you know it's silly this guy in red cape and uh, tights you know just flying around saving cats from trees you know it's a little silly and they had fun with that concept. But now they have the dark and gritty Superman, who's more like Batman than Superman. They they kind of lost what, what was fun about it, and they tried to make it dark and, and gritty as to try and separate itself from Marvel, which is more lighthearted and uh, self-aware. But one thing DC is doing well is its TV shows. Arrow's been going for five seasons strong. Flash and Supergirl are going into their... Well, Supergirl's going into the second season. Flash is going into the third season, I believe. And they actually have fun with their characters at times you know the flash and supergirl are light-hearted shows they have their serious moments like everything else but they know how to you know put the humor in and arrow does as well but it's a little darker and they actually make this archer kind of the the proto batman uh for television since they were doing that 
And they also have Gotham going, but Gotham, I've heard, has been hit or miss. I haven't been able to truly get into it, so I can't talk too much about it. But that's not to say Marvel isn't doing well with its TV shows. I mean, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is going strong. You know, you have Agent Carter, which was a really great show. It definitely got canceled way too soon because Peggy Carter and Haley Atwell, they just work so well (laughs) as one person that it's just amazing. And, I mean, the Netflix Marvel shows have been great. I watched... Daredevil, although the second season didn't quite stick the landing. Uh, Jessica Jones was amazing. Luke Cage, what I've watched so far, has been really good. So both both are doing really well in the, the realm of television, but it seems like Marvel is a little stronger with its films because it really wants the audience to have a good time, whereas DC wants the audience to forget what Marvel is and realize that they're different from what Marvel is. And one of the things that DC has been having a problem with is that it's trying to copy the. It was trying to copy the formula of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, where you have a solo movie of a, a character, and then you have a build up into a team movie. But DC wants to do like solo movie, prequel to team team movie, team movie, which hasn't been working because they've been shoving characters left and right into uh, different things. Like for instance, Batman v Superman. Not only were you being introduced to Batman, but you're being introduced to Lex Luthor and Wonder Woman and the cameos from the Justice League and all these different characters that we've heard nothing about in the Man of Steel, which was the only other DC Cinematic Universe movie to be released. And it's kind of confusing for the audience to keep track of the characters in their head. And if you look back at the superhero movies that have kind of been flops, they're usually the movies that have been trying to introduce and shoehorn in all these different characters like Batman and Robin. You had to get Mr. Freeze and Bane and Poison Ivy and Batgirl and all these different characters that are being introduced in one movie without any buildup and uh, real development of their characters. And the audiences don't like that. And DC still has yet to realize that they need to do proper groundwork before they get into like a full team movie. Because by the time we got to the Avengers with Marvel, we've seen Captain America in a movie. We've seen Thor in a movie. Uh, We've seen the Hulk, although he was not Mark Ruffalo. He was uh, Ed Norton. And we've seen Iron Man in movies. We had build up to these characters. We knew who they were at this point, and we were able to see them interact with other people that we knew who they were. Instead of seeing this random dude that suddenly showed up to fight alongside people and we're like, okay, you're supposed to know who this is. That's something that Marvel's been doing a lot better. But something both of them really need to work on is having uh, female characters in their own films. Sure, they have Jessica Jones and and Agent Carter in their own TV shows, and uh, that's really great. But we really need some female-led films. The next one Marvel has on tap is Captain Marvel coming out in 2019. And within the Marvel Cinematic Universe, there has not been a single film that is led by a female which I think is ridiculous because there are so many good Marvel uh, female characters that could be made into movies. I mean, Black Widow, for for crying out loud, you've already introduced her in all these different movies. Give her her own movie. Make it a really awesome spy movie. And the same goes for DC. DC, I mean, currently has Supergirl going, and they have Wonder Woman coming out next year, which is great. But the fact that you hadn't had a true Wonder Woman movie before that And we've had like a million Superman movies and a million Batman movies. And we've seen Batman's parents get shot a million times. And we have yet to see Wonder Woman truly represented on the big screen, except for like uh, a bit part in Batman v Superman. I think that's ridiculous. This is such a strong character. And there are so many strong characters within both of these universes that I think it's I think it's just failing the fans that we haven't had a, a proper film for any of them. I mean, if you look back at the the past films that have been uh, female-led for DC and Marvel, for instance, Elektra for Marvel came out in 2005. It was given a budget of $43 million. Now, you had Daredevil two years before in 2003 that had a budget of $78 million. Like, the difference in that budget is crazy. They apparently have no faith that these female-led movies are going to succeed, and they need to realize that women are coming into the comic book world now. They, they're enjoying seeing these things on screen. And I'm sure like they would love to see Wonder Woman have, their, have her own movie 
they would have loved to see her have her own movie like a couple years ago. I think it's I think it's ridiculous that we haven't been doing well representing half of the population and we've had just like a testosterone filled schedule of movies because we think that girls aren't going to come to the theaters. They have been coming to the theaters and they've wanted a, a character that they could that they could cheer on and if you're afraid of losing like a bunch of guys because you don't think they'll come to a female led movie they probably will if you do it right you can't just do it half baked you can't give it like a cut budget of what you would give a a male led movie you have to treat it like it's an actual film and not just this oh we're doing this to satisfy a small group of people when it's actually half of your demographic that's something that both of the franchises definitely need to work on Unfortunately, we're out of time for this week's episode of On Screen. Uh, Netflix Pick of the Weeks will have to wait until another time. If you guys have any topics that you would like me to cover in a future episode of On Screen, please comment on the video below. I would love to hear your suggestions. Until next time, take care. <laughs>